I'm an artist, actually more than an artist, artist, collector, scientist, in my own way, um, explorer definitely, and preserver of small natural objects. So um, this exhibition is a combination of who I am as an artist. So my idea with the collection of natural small objects are to take them where they would have decomposed or went back to, into the earth um, and take them out of that situation and put them in a museum situation atmosphere. And then to show that even if I try so hard to be a perfect artist, I will never be as good as God to create something as beautiful as this. When I started my master's degree, my supervisor told me to um, pick a topic that I'm interested or that I was interested as a child and then I won't get bored during the two or three years that I'm busy with my master's. So I thought a lot about who I was as a child. Um, luckily for me, I had a very happy childhood and um, supporting parents and family my whole life. So it was a time of collecting everything, stickers, erasers, butterflies, um, anything that's small and interesting and um, that's where my collecting as an artist started. The other thing that I can remember from my childhood as where this, comp this exhibition comes in is all the memories and nostalgia that I grew up with. So I was a collector from childhood, um, collecting everything from buttons and stamps with my grandfather and um, stickers and butterflies and everything that's small and integrate and interesting that I can hold and keep for myself. So um, as a child I remember playing with my grandfather's stamp collection and he had a huge box of stamps and me and my sister would always pack them out into different groups and they were always the, those favorite ones and the ones we um, thought over to have and to put on our pile and so eventually in 1991 my grandfather passed away and the stamp collection was divided between me, my sister and my cousin and so I have one third of that stamp collection and so there's always this sweet childhood memories of us playing with it and um, so this was a big part of my inspiration for this exhibition as well. As you can see with the etchings where it is very small etches and inspired by the integrate images and um, ornament frames that you find in stamps. So that combined with um, me remembering sitting around the table at the farm, the big big brown table and my dad and my granddad and uncles and everybody telling stories about um, how they can remember when they were children how um, this happened and that happened and so this makes part of definitely who I am um, spending time on the farm and being surrounded by collections from my childhood and this is where the collection or this exhibition came from and um, if you look at the titles of some of the etches as well they are all based on stories and memories and things that I can remember like um, the a cafe that my grandparents owned in Brantford or ran in Brantford um, its name was Kumvier and so one of the titles of the etches is also Kumvier with stories that I can remember about that um, and then I think we have also have a sense of humor in our family and always just enjoying to spend time together 
and um, thus the title as my tani a uh, man was was it my um and um, that was specifically um, entitled or when I thought about my aunt who's also an artist and a big inspiration when I grew up and taught me a lot about art and drawing and so that is a small tribute to her. Um, then um, when I think about collecting, why I collect, it is to preserve what's out there. I have a duty to save small natural objects that's going to deteriorate and go back into the earth and I need to save them and preserve them and does this work where um, I built a shrine where you can sort of I take what's been discarded and not seen as important and put it in a museum atmosphere and museum setting and thus making them more important than the average person would say and giving that natural object a chance to be appreciated and wondered about and that bringing us to the idea of a modern day view on the Wunderkammer or the cabinet of curiosities where I like to preserve what's what can be wondered about and what's interesting and small and just so beautiful. I can't collect without remembering where I've found the object or whether it's man-made or natural and so it's not just a collection of objects but a collection of memories and thus the altar piece where you can open the trays and inside you will see the object that reminds me or a fond memory that I have of a person or a story or a moment in my life with a short um, inscription or title in the front that describes that memory but the problem with memories is you think you remember the truth but you don't always because I do have an imagination and with time going passing and you remember stuff but in the end you can't be sure whether it's the truth or not and that brings us to the idea of the lion tooth that's in the cabinet as well where I like to think that my great-grandfather Rastus Vermaak um, fought a lion with his bare hands and killed it and then got the trophy where in truth he probably went uh, other side went hunting and actually did something that's not as good to do what I won't do today so when I collect I need to set some boundaries to um, I can't just collect everything that's beautiful so I decide on something and then I really focus on it and I do it properly and with this exhibition it was a small tube the size and whatever I found at the moment that I feel is worth saving and um, I filled them up from June 2015 till July 2016 and um, this is the end result thereof. Again each um, tube has a specific memory, a place and a moment and then a classification where it fits in that is um, written up in a personal diary but there's a code as well where you can follow whether it's 12A or 12B and each one um, sorted or categorized within the type of object that's inside. Okay, then another work is Ek is vermaakse kind with the saying, it comes from the saying um, Ek is nie vermaakse kind nie that means um, don't play me a fool or um, come from that but my maiden surname was or my maiden name was Vermaak as before I got married and became a Ubar and with that there's this whole thing about thus the change of a surname change who I am because now I have to be proud to be a Ubar 
and I'm fine with that my children are also you bash but do I forget to be a vermaak or am I still a vermaak and all those stories and the vermaak farm and where does that this fit in and that comes with change and that was also something I had to work through and think about while being married and being a Uber now. To go with the altar pieces to lead you into this wonderkamer room I have clues of other collections of bones and skulls and integrate objects that I've collected like Freaky Freaky that's a meerkat's foot, the goat skull with all the sayings of goat idioms and sayings about goats which fits back into how our family really likes to talk in idioms and um, achter ons kom ook in die kraal in um, stuff like that saying talking ways like that um, so the jars or the domes are a way to lead you into what's coming and this room, Wunderkamer room, is I hope a glimpse into my mind and to show you what I think about and why my art is so personal and it's a way for me to say this is who I am and this is why I collect and maybe inspire people to also look at the overlooked and maybe appreciate stuff that you don't see every day. I like to work small. I think it started out as a logistic thing that I just didn't have enough space to put big stuff and that's the one thing and the other thing is small things so easily get overlooked and you can just ignore them but if you take them and pick them up you can actually see how beautiful an insect is or um, look at all the joints and the small wings and I'm just really intrigued with small things. <laughs> So with the small objects, um, there's usually small writing in my art as well. And the idea behind small writing is my art is very personal and I'm willing to open up in a small degree and to tell you what I'm thinking about and memories I have and who I am. But the viewer doesn't necessarily need to read it if they just want to walk past a work and look at it and hopefully appreciate it for its um, quality and for if it's beautiful to them then then it's fine but in most of my work if you really look closer you will find some sort of small writing somewhere to give you clues to decipher the work or what was I, what I was thinking about when I was making the art and um, so if you take the time you are welcome to go and search a bit deeper into my mind or my hopes and dreams. <laughs>